Hi there, this is Gary Ryan Blair, and welcome to part three of our Fight to Win series. Now, when looking at the most recent events that are going on in society right now, it's best to apply something called Occam's Razor. That is, the simplest and the most straightforward explanation is most likely the correct one. And when it comes to COVID, when it comes to mass vaccinations, open borders, school closings, business shutdowns, censorship, cancel culture, and so much more, Occam's Razors would lead us to believe that we are in the fight of our lives, a battle between good and evil, a war that we simply cannot afford to ignore nor lose. In a part one of this series, we discuss how battles are not won by defensive tactics and why winning requires the deployment of a strong offense. And in part two, you learn how to implement the world's best offensive strategy for overwhelming your enemy and why you must make it a permanent part of your behavior. Well, today, we're going to be reminded that good must conquer evil and how becoming your own hero is the only way to achieve that outcome. Now, let's get something straight right out of the gates. You exist to win, to create, to construct. You exist to contribute, to exceed expectations, to pursue happiness, and to inspire excellence. You are born to rise to great challenges, to face your fears, to unleash your greatness, and to become as courageous as a mighty lion. You are not created to wear a mask, to stay at home, to live in fear, to stick your head in the sand, and to obey stupid mandates. Everything that's going on right now is intentionally designed to make you fat, lazy, physically and mentally weak, depressed, ignorant, scared, and reliant upon the government for chump change. Big Tech, your elected officials and their dark masters see you as a necessary evil. They don't give a rat's ass about you, about your business, nor your health. They serve themselves, they engage in institutional corruption, and they care only about advancing their own agenda. They hate strong-willed, educated citizens who refuse to believe the steaming piles of bullshit that they're constantly serving up. That's why we're going to spend the remainder of this message focused on turning you into a hero and your life into a real-life action movie. See, we live our lives using just three character roles, and they are the victim, the villain, and the hero. And the world's most popular emotional plot in movies and in real life is known as the good versus evil plot. Go back as far as you want to the first written or spoken words, and you'll detect this plot carefully recorded and repeated throughout history of mankind. The struggle between good and evil is the underlying theme of any drama, and make no mistake about it, this drama is what our emotional self lives for and is willing to die for. The negative element is part and parcel of goodness triumphs over evil. I'm talking about hate, fear, envy, jealousy, racism, and destruction. They're not the exclusive domain of movie directors. They take their toll in broken marriages, in criminal acts, in terrorism, and in workplace conflict. The negative energy of this ancient theoretical school for our emotions fills our courtrooms, our boardrooms, classrooms, and even our living rooms. And it drives people to therapy sessions, to drinking, drugs, suicide, and other forms of self-destruction. The script of Good vs. Evil features three starring roles. The evil villain who abuses the victim, the innocent victim who is saved by the noble hero, and the noble hero who defeats the evil villain. And whether we realize it or not, every person's emotions are always auditioning for one of these three roles. So let's start by talking about the victim. Here are some of the feelings the victim role allows people to access and to put on full display. Grief, powerlessness, sadness, low self-esteem, submissiveness, anguish, fearfulness, suffering, hopelessness, feeling rejected, incapacity of any type, depression, self-doubt, fragility, and dependency and vulnerability. While there are those who live life in a chronic victim role, we all go through periods in our lives we get to play this part, including even at work. So let's focus in on the villain. The role of the villain can be recognized by observing the following attributes. Arrogance, selfishness, addiction, deception, scheming, sneaky, cruelty, greedy, manipulative, dissatisfied, intolerant, belligerent, and even hypocritical. They have a psychotic capacity to lie to you with a smile on their face and they are often seductive, they're charming, flattering, and mischievous. They create diversions and operate with great speed so as to hide their true intentions. They're wealthy, they're intelligent, and they're very good communicators as well as being an energy-draining nightmare. 
And since the days of Greek tragedies to today's modern thrillers, the bad guys, while well, they move in the half shadows, they scheme, they're cunning, cleverly plotting and doing whatever they please. They're undeterred by public opinion. Villains love to torture and to control their victims. And over years of practice, the script has endowed the villain role with three unique tactics for bullying, for intimidating, and for bulldozing over people. I'm talking about manipulation, about control, and abuse. The common denominator of all villains is a distinct lack of heart. They freeze you rather than cheer you with warmth. Their energy pulls you in quickly to take whatever it is they want from you and does not flow outward to give generously, except to set you up for a bigger take. Now, villains themselves take many shapes and sizes, from the executives and boards who depress wages for workers, but who grant themselves enormously large pay packages, to politicians who cater to lobbyists and special interest groups, instead of serving the best interests of their constituents, to the news media who manufacture and distort news to accommodate their biased agenda. See, the villain role is played by many parties and in as many diabolical ways that you could possibly imagine. So let's focus on the good guy, on the hero. See, my life's work is dedicated to helping my clients become their very own heroes. But the following are some of the virtuous qualities that you can, that you must, and you will develop by acting out the hero role in your own life. And they are determined, principled, compassionate. The hero is focused, is powerful, strong, bold, and nurturing. The hero is also persevering, loving, idealistic. They're inspiring, giving, disciplined, committed, responsible, honest, caring, humble, and most of all, they're courageous. Now, it's important to note, in many cases, an actor auditions for the hero role after having played the victim role many times in their life. She has finally found a method to save herself, which becomes her solution for saving other victims who are going through the exact same problems. Every time the hero implements this strategy, emotionally, she relives saving herself. And this feeling occurs every time you make a commitment and honor it, every time you make a promise and keep it, and every time you set a goal and you achieve it. By doing these things, you are in effect reinforcing hero qualities and thus becoming your own hero. Triumph, the thrill of victory, the capacity to dare something worthwhile, or to stand for principle is the passion that drives the hero into action. That's why I encourage you to become your own hero of your own life, your own story. I'm talking about the noble hero that takes on and overcomes every challenge, the courageous hero who confronts and defeats the evil villain, and the empowered hero who refuses to be victimized in any way, shape, or form. So let's wrap this one up. The purpose of the victim role is to play it over and over and over again until you finally wake up and choose to become your own hero. And it's worth noting that if someone else saves you, you will repeat the same scenario before long. And that's precisely why I place such a strong emphasis on the importance of self-reliance. Goodness must triumph over evil and virtue must always overrule vice. As it's only when you become your own hero, when you can stand on your own two feet and save yourself that you are truly complete. That is your role, that is your right, and that is your responsibility. And that is how you win the fight over evil. 